Welcome back to Lockdown Embryology. I'm Professor Alice Roberts. This is the third video looking at the development of the cardiovascular system in the embryo. And this time we're focusing on the fetal circulation and how that changes at the moment of birth. But to begin with, I'm just drawing some of the veins which enter the caudal end, the, the bottom end of the developing heart tube. So these veins all feed into the sinus venosus, this large confluence of veins that empties into the embryonic primitive atrium. And you can see that the sinus venosus has a kind of horn-like appearance. It has two horns on each side and there are various veins emptying into each of those horns in a symmetrical fashion to begin with. So there's the sinus venosus. And most laterally, we've got a pair of veins, the anterior and posterior cardinal veins, which join together to make the common cardinal vein. Then there's the umbilical vein, and that is bringing blood from the placenta. And then we also have vitellin veins, and these vitellin veins are draining blood from the yolk sac, but also from the gut tube. So these veins are rather different to the veins that we have once the child is born and in adulthood. And they're different because of how they look, but they're also different in terms of the sort of blood they contain because the cardinal veins are going to be bringing deoxygenated blood, the anterior cardinal vein draining the head, the posterior cardinal vein draining the lower half of the body. The vitellian veins are going to be bringing deoxygenated blood from, from the gut, but the umbilical veins are bringing oxygenated blood to this embryonic heart. So an important difference there. As these veins continue developing, what we're going to start seeing is some asymmetry emerging. And the liver plays an important role here. The liver is growing into septum transversum and the vitellian veins form a network within the developing liver tissue called hepatic sinusoids. And that's quite extensive and it grows and grows so that the umbilical veins end up being absorbed into that plexus as well, as you can see here. This is all happening fairly swiftly. The image at the top shows the embryo at about four weeks of development, and this lower image is at about five weeks of development. What you notice in that lower image is you're starting to get connections between the right and left vitellin veins and those hepatic sinusoids inside the liver. After this, what we start to see is asymmetry emerging. And what's happening is we're losing portions of some veins and then other veins are becoming more important. So the proximal parts of the umbilical veins, the parts that drain into the sinus venosus, disappear, shrivel away. And in fact, the more distal part of the right umbilical vein also completely disappears. So that leaves us with just the left umbilical vein bringing oxygenated blood from the placenta. Now that's gonna end up flowing into the right-hand side of this developing embryonic heart. So we get a connection across underneath the liver, this ductus venosus, which carries that oxygenated blood straight past the liver and then up to the right hepatic cardiac channel, which is the remnant of the vitellin vein between the liver and the sinus venosus. With the vitellin veins, it's almost exactly the opposite scenario where the left vitellin vein disappears proximally where it's draining into sinus venosus and distally below the liver as well. Whereas it's retained on the right hand side, distally it becomes the superior mesenteric vein draining the gut and proximally it becomes the right hepatocardiac channel which eventually will turn into part of the IVC and out of that network of veins, a principal vein, the portal vein, forms, which is draining blood from the liver into the inferior vena cava. That focus on the veins to begin with is important because now we know where the oxygenated blood is coming from that enters the embryonic and eventually the fetal circulation. Remember, the difference between an embryo and a fetus is just one of timing. We call it an embryo up until eight weeks of development, and after that, it's a fetus. So I'm starting to sketch out here this fetal circulation, which is quite different to our circulations in that 
it really is a single circulation so it's a it's a little bit like the circulation of a fish where you've got the heart pumping out to the gills pumping out deoxygenated blood to the gills there the blood picks up oxygen then it's pumped around the body and then back to the heart again whereas you now have a double circulation you have the right side of your heart pumping out deoxygenated blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen then that's brought back to the heart and then pumped out by the left side of the heart to all the tissues of your body in the systemic circulation. The foetus, on the other hand, effectively has a single circulation. It's going to bring oxygenated blood into its heart and then pump that around the body and then that just goes off to the placenta again to be oxygenated rather than coming back to the heart in between. So there's going to be a connection between the right and the left sides of the heart in the foetus and that is a connection which will have to change, which will have to disappear at the moment of birth. So effectively, all that complicated septation that happened in the developing heart was setting up a series of partial septa, partial partitions, that act like a valve, which are going to allow blood to flow through them, shunting blood from right to left in the foetus. But at the moment of birth, those valves can close and you've sealed off the right and the left sides of the heart. So I'm starting off here sketching out the heart and the liver, which is important, and I'm gonna have a stand-in single lung. There are, of course, a pair of lungs in this developing embryo. And there is a bit of a pulmonary circulation. There are blood vessels going out to these developing lungs, but there's nowhere near as much blood flowing through those as there will be after the moment the baby takes its first breath. So it's a, a very much diminished pulmonary circulation in the embryo. So this is the single umbilical vein that's left after all that rearranging of the veins. That's bringing oxygenated blood past the liver. It doesn't want to dump it into those hepatic sinusoids. It bypasses the liver via that ductus venosus. That oxygenated blood is going into the right atrium of the heart. In order to be pumped out to the tissues of the body, it needs to be over on the left-hand side. So it goes straight from the right atrium into the left atrium through those holes that we identified in the last video. So through foramen ovale and ostium secundum into the left atrium. And from there, it's pumped into the left ventricle and then out into the aorta. There's not much blood going to those developing lungs, so we do need to shunt blood back into the systemic circulation, and that happens via the ductus arteriosus. So that springs from the pulmonary trunk and carries a lot of blood straight up into the aorta so that it's not pushed out to those lungs, which of course are not inflated. There's not much blood going to them. There's enough, but not much. And they're certainly not doing the job of oxygenating the blood at this point. So that's another really important vessel, that ductus arteriosus. And as we go down the descending aorta, we see that coming off the iliac vessels, we've got the two umbilical arteries. So these are taking deoxygenated blood back to the placenta off to be oxygenated. So in the umbilical cord, we see three vessels, and it's really important to check that there are three vessels when the cord is cut at birth. Now I'm going to use colour to illustrate the oxygenated blood flowing into this foetus. So we'll have lovely bright red oxygenated blood flowing through that umbilical vein. So it's a bit odd because usually obviously we show veins in blue, but this time I'm using the colour to represent the type of blood that's flowing inside the vessel. And this is nice richly oxygenated blood, about 80% oxygenation flowing into the embryo. We've got some deoxygenated blood coming back via the inferior vena cava and that portal vein which is bringing all the blood from the gut and of course that is going to mix in with this oxygenated blood but there's still plenty of oxygen in that blood to be carried around the embryo. That oxygenated blood then flows up into the right atrium and then shunts across into the left atrium. So I'm going to show you that lovely red oxygenated blood filling up that left atrium. So behind those great vessels there, behind the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, that oxygenated bloodstream has passed through foramen ovale and ostium secundum into the left atrium and then I'll show it filling up the left ventricle and from there it's going to be pumped out of course into the aorta. 
so this great archery leaving the heart with a single arch now so we started off with five pairs of aortic arches on each side and they resolve into a single aortic arch which is in fact the left fourth aortic arch which sticks around the other arteries do stick around but they make parts of vessels in the head and the neck here's some deoxygenated blood flowing into the heart on the right hand side via the superior vena cava and that is just going to go down into the right ventricle and then off into the pulmonary trunk where a lot of it is going to re-enter the aorta via the ductus arteriosus and the ductus arteriosus joins the aorta after the major vessels have sprung off the arch of the aorta and then that blood is flowing down the aorta and I haven't shown all the vessels coming off that which are distributing it to the tissues of the body what I've done is just focused on the way that blood is exiting the body of this fetus via those umbilical arteries so they are branches off the internal iliac arteries and they're carrying relatively deoxygenated blood back to the placenta. I'm going to add some colour to the veins over on this side as well because I think it really helps us to see where this oxygenated blood is entering the fetal circulation. So first of all via those paired umbilical veins when we have that symmetrical setup and then later on we get this asymmetry and you can see the left umbilical vein becoming the umbilical vein bringing that oxygenated blood bypassing the liver via ductus venosus and flowing into sinus venosus. At the moment of birth when the baby takes its first breath we're going to see some momentous changes in this circulation. The baby is suddenly going to need a double circulation it's had a single circulation up until this point this is the moment where it switches to a double circulation it's switching from getting its oxygen from the placenta to getting its oxygen from lungs at the moment that the baby takes its first breath its new lungs fill with air they pull blood into them so there's a rush of blood into that pulmonary circulation and that means there's going to be a rush of blood into the left atrium. The four pulmonary veins, two on each side, pour blood into that left atrium. And that increase in pressure in the left atrium pushes septum primum against septum secundum and closes that valve, closes foramen ovale. Ductus arteriosus also closes. So this means that the pulmonary and systemic circulations are separated and ductus venosus closes down as well. But we can still see the remnants of those fetal vessels that shut down in adult anatomy. If we look underneath the arch of the aorta, we see there's a fibrous strand attaching the aorta down to the pulmonary trunk. It's the remnant of ductus arteriosus. We call it ligamentum arteriosum. And similarly, underneath the liver, the remnant of ductus venosus is there as ligamentum venosum. And in fact, beyond the liver, we've got the remnant of the umbilical vein, and that forms the ligamentum teres lying within the free edge of the falciform ligament. So there are all these clues in adult anatomy as to this extraordinary circulation in the fetus, which allows the fetus to be getting its oxygen from the placenta, having a single circulation, but also set up so that at that moment of birth it can have this double circulation. At some point I will do another video about the arch arteries and what they will develop into, but I think that's enough for now. Thank you for watching and see you again soon with a little bit more lockdown embryology. Please like, please share, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notifications of new videos as I post them up and I will see you next time.